Hey everyone, welcome to Play Hooky with me. In today's video, I'm going to share some really easy straps and cords that you've probably seen before, but hopefully you'll find a useful tip here or there that will make the process a little easier when you're making them. There are timestamps along the progress line, so you can skip to your point of interest. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's begin with a basic strap. This is one that you do need to know how long you want it before you even begin because we're starting with a foundation chain and then we're going to be working in rounds around it. To get started, create a slip knot on your hook. From here, just create a chain for however long you want your strap to be. For demonstration purposes, I'm just going up to 10. We're going to be working into the back bump of these chains. This is going to give you a much tighter center and easier for you to work on both sides of the chain when we get into that part. So just flip and then you'll see the bumps on the back. This is what we're going to work into. And we're going to do two single crochets in this very first bump. We're going to be creating the first edge with that. So working in. One single crochet. two single crochets. Now continue on all the way down with single crochets in each one of these bumps. When you reach the end in the very last bump, you want to do four single crochets into it. This is creating the other side of your strap. And now we're going to continue along on the other side doing single crochets into the other side of that chain and stop before we hit those two single crochets that we began with. I'm going to carry that yarn with me. That will save me some time weaving in later and also just makes it a little bit more sturdy in the center there. We've come to the other side where we have those two single crochets that we began with. We're going to add two more single crochets into that same spot to give us the four single crochets like we have at the other side. So going into the same spot Add two more single crochets and two. Go ahead and do a slip stitch into that first stitch that you began with. Chain one and in the same spot do two single crochets. One and two. Now we're going to work our way down the other side again with single crochets. And before we hit those four single crochets on the other side, stop. Once you've reached the end, figure out where your four single crochets are. Here are mine. One, two, three, four. We're going to do another increase. And what we're going to do is we're going to do single crochet in that first stitch, an increase in the second, another increase in the third, and then a single crochet in that fourth one. So it'll be single crochet, two single crochets, two single crochets, single crochet. That will give us six. One, two in the next stitch, two in the next stitch, and then one. And now we're ready to go to the other side again. Continue on until you reach that increase. Do not work into that increase. We've come to the other side. Now we want to do the same increase to make these sides match. 
So right before you hit that stitch marker, the stitch right before it, add two more. And there you go. You can either slip stitch in there to complete the stitch, or you can do like what I'm going to do. I'm going to just snip the yarn. This will give a really pretty stitch to complete this round. I'm going under both sides of the V here. But on this side, just in the back of the V. We're basically going to be doing the same technique for these straps here. The only difference is where we put our hook when we're yarning over and pulling it through. One way you're going to get that Tunisian effect, and in the other you're going to get a knitted effect. But we're going through the same motions for both. You can make this as wide as you like for this demonstration. I'm just going to do a chain of five. We've added a slip knot to our hook. I'm going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. For this appearance, this is just Tunisian crochet, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. Leaving that loop on your hook, going into the next chain, pull up a loop. In the next chain, pull up a loop. In the next, pull up a loop. And in the final chain, pull up a loop. Now we're going to be going back, yarn over, pull through one, and then for the rest we're going to pull through two. Yarn over, 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 pull through two. Now, if you look here, you'll see that you have five bars. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to be inserting our hook into those bars and just pulling up a stitch. So working into the next bar, insert your hook, pull the yarn through to create a loop. In the next bar, go through, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Through, yarn over, pull up a loop. And then in that final bar there, go through, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Whatever chain you started with is the amount of loops that you'll always have on your hook. I started with five, so I always have five loops. We're going to form that side by just yarning over and pulling through one. And now we're just going to continue pulling through two all the way across. And that's all there is to this technique. This is going to give you a really pretty Tunisian strap. But let's say that you want to have that knitted effect. You're going to go through the same exact process. Create your foundation chain. Three, four, five. Going into that second chain, pull up a loop. Pull up a loop. Pull up a loop. Pull up a loop. And now you're going to do the same thing. Yarn over, pull through one, and then Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two to get to the other side. Again, you have those five bars, one, two, three, four, five. But instead of inserting your hook right behind it, you're going to go through this time, all the way through. Yarn over, pull through. Go right through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and in that very last stitch, yarn over, pull through. Repeat the process, yarn over, pull through one, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Now what you're going to have here now is you're going to have what essentially looks like a knit stitch. Can you see how this has like a bar? You have this horizontal one, ignore that for now, but right here, these two bars, you're going to put your hook through there. 
So continuing on, going through, yarn over, pull through. Here we go again, right between those two bars, go through, through, and on this side, it looks like you're going through two bars like that. Okay, yarn over, pull through one, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. The process is the same for both of the straps. When you've completed the length that you want, you can just fasten off like this, or you can add a slip stitch edging. I would just recommend that you go in, pull your yarn through, and slip stitch. Go in, pull your yarn through, and slip stitch. And that's either way. If you were doing the Tunisian, you would do the same thing. You would just go into that back bar and then pull your yarn through. Completely up to you, whichever one you're working on. If you don't want to do a slip stitch finish, then you can just fasten off at this point and weave in your end. If you're not familiar with how to do an eye cord, I'll go ahead and show you how it's typically done. Create a slip knot on your hook. And now we're just going to chain three or four. Normally I see three chains for this. Just like that Tunisian style strap earlier, we're just going to be pulling up loops. So working into that next chain, pull up a loop, and into that final chain, pull up a loop. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to release these first two loops off the hook and hold on to them. We're going to be yarning over, pulling the yarn through that very first stitch, and now we're going to come back to these stitches that we're holding on to, going into that first stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, into that final stitch, go through it, yarn over and pull up a loop. And as you can see, we have these little knit stitches. You're just going to keep repeating this process. Release those stitches, yarn over, pull through, going into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, going into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. And you'll just continue doing this until you reach the length that you want your cord to be. But as you can see, it's really fiddly and you make a very narrow cord. However, there is a tip that I want to share with you that makes this a lot easier to do and helps you to go up higher on your stitch count. Let's start again. Add a slip knot to your hook. We're going to go up to five. One, two, three, four, five. But like I said, you can go as high as you want with this technique. Repeat the process just like we did before, working into those stitches to form loops on your hook. Whatever chain you started with, that's how many loops you want to see on your hook there. One, two, three, four, five. So instead of holding on to these loops like we did before, instead we're going to bring something in to place our loops onto. Here is a little knitting cable. If you don't have a knitting cable, that's totally fine. Just find yourself a tapestry needle. Just feed whatever you want to use. Feed your loops onto it. Grab your yarn. You don't want to pull too, too tight on this or that's going to get very tight. It's not a big deal. It's just hard to work into if you do that. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to be feeding these loops off of the little tapestry needle here as we go. Take your working yarn and like before, yarn over and pull through to create a loop. Next, go into that next loop, yarn over, pull through. yarn is splitting on me. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. And with the final one, yarn over, pull through. Same thing, just a lot easier. I find that this works a little bit better for me just because it's a little less slick than the tapestry needle that I was using. 
What would be even better is probably a wood skewer, something dry, you know, just to help it stick a little bit, or a double pointed wood needle, knitting needle, that would be great too. But you get the idea. You just want to have these held on something just so you don't have to be holding onto them with your fingers. And then you just continue on doing this back and forth, back and forth. And you'll just continue doing this until you reach the length that you want your cord to be. As you can see, it just kind of folds in on itself. It's not a very tight, tight join, but it does stay in place. To finish your cord, just yarn over and pull through all of the loops and fasten off. If you do know how to knit, I would recommend that you create your eye cord with your knitting needles. Cast on as many stitches as you want. I did five for this demonstration. And then you're just going to knit as you normally would. But instead of flipping your work, you're just going to shift those stitches down to the other side, point your needle counterclockwise, and your working yarn will be here at the bottom. Just bring it up and continue knitting. You're always going to be working on the right side. You're never going to be flipping your work. Once you come to the end, all you're going to do is just shift your work to the other side of the needle, move counterclockwise, and continue on. Just pull that yarn up, yarn over, and knit. This is just a very quick demonstration, but if you just look up knitted eye cord, you'll be all set. If you really do not like making eye cords, you can do an alternative that gives you the same effect. Take the strap that you made with the knitted effect and just fold it together and create a slip stitch down the side. This is what you're going to get if you do that. What I really like about this is that it gives me way more versatility on how wide I want to make it, and it's a lot quicker and not so fussy. Once you finish that final row, just fold the two sides together and form a slip stitch to join the two sides. And then from there, just making sure that you pick up both sides of those stitches. You should see four loops on your hook like this. Yarn over and pull through and slip stitch. And that's all there is to that. Here's a really cute little cord that you can make with single crochets. Super easy to make. To do this, you can work with two separate balls of yarn, or you can make an extra long tail and just utilize that instead. I've made my tail really nice and long. I'm going to add a slip knot to my hook. And so now I have essentially two strands of yarn to work with. Here is my tail. I'm keeping that in front. And here is my working yarn in back. Taking your tail, wrap over your hook. It should look like this. And then create a single crochet. Yarn over the hook. And then yarn over and pull through. The yarn goes over the top of your hook and then you create a single crochet to trap it. Just go under the yarn, pull it up, and yarn over and pull through. Looks like that. Yarn over and pull through. And then once you get the hang of this, you'll get really fast. You 
You can control the tension of this by how tight or loose you make this little band here. And then once you've reached the end, just fasten off. You can tie those ends together or however you want to weave in those ends. And that's all there is to it. The lovely cat and dog hair seen in today's video was brought to you by Sadie, Loki, and Orion. Be sure to hit like for their effort. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.